Hello traders, this is Rich Terry from TradeSite. This is the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Thursday, May 2nd, 2013. So post-Fed meeting today, post-FOMC decision and comments, we uh, wound up going out with uh, with some pretty good losses, uh, essentially closing on the lows. We were lower, lower across uh, all three sides, the ES, the NQ, and the Dow. We uh, saw some, some pretty negative market internals. We had uh, minus 1,300 issues on uh, the New York side, minus 1,400 issues on NASDAQ. The uh, VIX was uh, was higher for all of the day. It was actually higher yesterday, too, kind of implying that we were we could be heading lower today. Uh, so we definitely saw a, kind of a distribution day and uh, weak, weakness pretty much across the board. So let's drill down and take a look at the uh, the key futures charts. First, let's look. Let's take a look at the ES futures. All right, here's look at the ES futures. You see, we had just recently got this 13 exhaustion warning. Right now, we had curled back down to the downside after this this high close on the move. Right now, what we've done here is is only just kind of roll down and essentially set the table for a break, but we haven't broken yet. Uh, we can't even talk about. Uh, going negative in the chart here until the 10 EMA is is lost on a closing basis. Today we we got down and used that uh, as support late in the session, but until that level is taken out, uh, the trend remains remains up. Uh, near term levels overhead 7 eighths level at 15.93 and three quarters is uh, the high watermark of the uh, the move so far, and also the 7 eighths level on the GAN. If they can break above that. The risk line from the seeker is going to come into play, and that's going to be about 16.08 and a quarter. To the downside, if we do break and lose the 20, uh, sorry, the 10 EMA, then we're going to look at this 6 ace level at 15.62.50. Then we got layered support here. Then the 50 comes into play. The uh, prior swing lows for last month, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's there's definitely a lot of a lot of levels close by, which could make this more of a lateral range unless we start losing this with some velocity. So we have one down day today, but one day does not make a trend, so we have to see if we uh, actually take a turn here and, and start to pick up some velocity. So, you know, tomorrow's, I think tomorrow's uh, price action is going to be fairly important because it's the day after the Fed meeting. A lot of times that's, that can be very, very telling. So we'll see what they give us tomorrow, and then, of course, Friday is going to be the non-farm number for the monthly uh, economic uh, picture as far as the employment situation. So one day is not, one day, just to reiterate, one day is not, does not make a trend. We have to see how, how we handle with this uh, 10 EMA. All right, so here's a look at the, uh, the NQ futures. Now the NQs uh, were relatively strong versus the broad market. You, you can see we did not take out the prior, prior day's low while we did so decisively in the broad market. So we're seven days up now. We're still using the, the uh, upper fringe of the overbought area of the GAN box here at plus two ways, 28.90 and a half. Very key resistance uh, because that if, if that level is taken, that, f that frame shift the box to the upside, which hasn't happened yet. So we've got very, very strong resistance just overhead. Near-term support is going to obviously be the prior day's low. You can even say the uh, the plus one ace level at 28.51, and then the other one to really watch is going to be the 10 EMA if we do roll to the downside at about 28.37 or so. All right, so here's a look at the advanced declines. The advanced declines were very negative today. You can see that we we didn't even get up to the old trend line here or take out the highs here on the Nasdaq side, and we're turning back down again. I think this is probably near term the most important chart to watch to see if we actually take out this prior low. If we take out this prior low, um, that's probably going to be pretty uh, pretty negative, and I think you're going to see that manifest itself across the market. The other side of the uh, the other side of the coin is that is that the New York so Stock Exchange side, the NYSE side, is still very positive. Uh, we did take a hit today and curl to the downside, but we still have some distance before we get to this to this very critical trend line. So NASDAQ side remains broken and sloppy, but the New York side, which is the more important side, is still holding up. The uh, oil futures, these are the blue right here, took a, took a very substantial hit today. Oil was really, really weak today. The uh, OSX itself is still range bound, uh, but the series of, of potential lower highs here in, uh, in, oil, in the oil futures are, are definitely going to be concerning. But... Uh, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't necessarily count on on oil collapsing just yet until 
we start to see a break in the OSX. If the OSX takes out this prior low right here at about 234, then uh, the oil futures themselves are going to be in trouble and probably in, end up in, uh, in a bit of a corrective move here to the downside. So far, we've really just been back and forth, just whipping really, really hard, uh, shaking out the long hands. But if we do lose that low in the OSX, I think we'll probably wind up seeing a, a more sustained drop that's going to be a little bit more tradable than this back and forth that we've seen recently. All right, here's the NDX versus the S&P. You can see that we're really starting to, to pick up some, uh, some positive momentum. The uh, trend line is uh, now really, really in jeopardy. Uh, I, I think you really have to say that this is follow through to the upside now. This downtrend that we've had in, that we've had in place here is definitely broken. And it's a question of whether we can keep building on this and develop some more positive momentum. That would definitely be very welcome. And, and, uh, and definitely the uh, relative performance of Apple is going to weigh on this because it's so heavily weighted in the NDX. Apple was uh, a little bit sloppy today, but it had a huge day yesterday. If this can stay positive, uh, that could be a place where some money could rotate out of some of the stocks that are overbought in the broad market, a lot of these dividend-paying stocks. And we could see some money flow into the NASDAQ side, which could buffer you know, equities overall. If that does happen, we could be want could wind up into more of a more of a lateral trading range here over the summer rather than an outright break. A lot of people are talking right now about sell them and go away. But that that's really only going to work if if all three sides of the market are heading lower than the Nasdaq side, the S P side, and the Dow. But uh you know for now, you know, we've got to take it one candle at a time. Right now we're starting to see some relative strength in the NDX which is which is certainly welcome. Here's a look at the 10-day trend. This is uh, neither overbought nor oversold. We're actually very close to kind of that, just that, that midpoint where we're just kind of neutral. Uh, did make We were moving towards, uh, actually, believe it or not, oversold, uh, but we're definitely not, uh, not there yet. We're actually moving a little bit in the direction of being more overbought. But uh, for now, it's neutral, and we'll keep monitoring this to see if it gives us uh, some kind of a signal or a confirmation. All right, let's take a look at the... Uh, individual sectors let's look at them rank best to worst and you can see they're all they're all red uh the consumer discretionaries um were were fairly weak the uh are fairly strong i mean rather the uh socks was was near the top of the list today which is which is very positive for nasdaq the computer hardware was also positive another another good thing for nasdaq uh at the bottom of the list here were the uh were the transports which is very much um, cyclically driven. Uh, the BTKs were, all, were also fairly weak, which could be okay as long as there's some money rotating uh, on, a, on a steady basis into the SOX and some of the other uh, NASDAQ sectors. Gold and silver is still fairly low on the list. Uh, the the uh, OS XOI was, was weak. The BKX uh, was, was weaker than the overall market. So for now, you know, if we can see some, see some positive rotation into the, uh, into the semiconductors, that would be would definitely help the market overall. One thing that's a little bit concerning here is seeing the transports at the bottom of the list because they're generally a, a late cycle group. And if they start to roll over now while we're starting to see some weakness in the banks, that takes away one of the uh, the havens that often uh, can buffer the market when we can late in the cycle. So we got to uh, keep on top of, the, of their relative performance to see how they hold up. And so drilling down to the individual sectors, Here's a look at the socks. The socks is still kind of grinding against the prior high. We tried to take it out yesterday, but it didn't do so convincingly. We're now seven days up in the secret count. We have this little inside day here. Um, you know, having your best your best performing sector on the day, having an inside candle isn't isn't nothing nothing really to brag about for the overall market. But uh, anyway, uh, near term resistance remains at the plus one ace level at 445.31. If they take that out, 453.13 is plus two A's in, in a much stronger level than that four uh, than that 445 level. To the downside, expect expect some pretty good support at 437.50, which is that eight A's level. Remember, the eight A's level is very important. Then we've got another level just below it, uh, which is going to be the rising 10 EMA right around 435. Uh, moving on to the oil services, the OSX, uh, still just kind of lateral here for the last week or so. It's had a bit of an upward bias, but it's having real trouble here at this 8 ace level at 250. So this, I mean, this chart's been lateral for uh, for months now, but uh, really hasn't been able to get up and go above that 8 ace level. 
Support to the downside is obviously going to be going to be today's low, which is the 10 EMA, and then just below that, the 50 DMA, and the 50 DMA does now have a downward slope to it, which is which is always notable. The banking index, the BKX, was really weak today throughout most of the session, closer to one week low. You can see back here, close just below that 8 ace level at 56.25. Remember that that's key key support or resistance either way but it's that I mean, just means it's a very strong level we're not able to take out this prior high here basically only just matched it and we're, now we're potentially rolling to the downside expect uh, first support here at about 55 and three quarters which is the 50 DMA and then 55 and a half or so at this 7 ace level XAU is down about 2% today, but it really doesn't move the needle either way just because we're still lateral within the prior week's range pretty much. So nothing really new there. They did try to dress it up towards the end of the day. They did save uh, some much lower prices earlier, but for now they haven't really been able to pivot this up. And here's the BTK. The BTK was, was kind of grinding against this 7 ace level really kind of unable to get past these these prior high closes keep in mind here that we do have this 13 exhaustion warning in place and now we've settled below the 10 EMA if we could follow through to the downside that will take this exhaustion warning and activate it into an outright sell signal if the sell signal uh, does manifest itself first thing we have to do is look at this gap window right here you see my cursor the uh, opening of this bar is going to be the beginning of it. That's going to be the first area that's going to come into play at about 1865 or so. And then the gap fill down here is going to be the next level to look for, which is the 5 ace level and also the 50 DMA at about 1812. So definitely keep uh, keep on top of these BTKs for short entries. Just look look for a rollover and then, uh, and then some sort of an indication that they, that they plan on following through. I know I'm going to be definitely be on top of these. Uh, for the next few days for sure all right here's a look at the gold the I'm sorry the oil futures the oil futures lost about two dollars and forty cents today this move kind of crunched it back down here took it below all the important major moving averages so this chart is back to uh, back to negative keep in mind that while we bump back up here all we did was retest this high but we did take out the prior low over here when we when we got all the way down to this minus one ace level and now we've got some velocity to the downside again the other thing to keep in mind is the gold uh, chart they did try higher prices here after the announcement but it ultimately didn't wind up filling in it's still above just barely the 10 the 10 EMA so it's still short-term positive uh, but it's starting to look like it might want to roll over here if it does start to roll over it takes out today's low there's really not much real support until we get back down to this two ace level at about 13.75. On the upside, if uh, they do start to uh, migrate toward back towards gold as maybe a flight to quality, if uh, some of the equities start to roll, the four ace level of 1500 is going to be very key. All right, folks. As always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for Trade Site.